In this video, we will teach you the basic growth pattern of populations, carrying capacity, and maximum sustainable yield. Along with that, we'll teach you how these concepts help us to grow and harvest algae. First, it is important to know how populations grow over time. We will draw a graph to help illustrate our point. The y-axis will represent the number of individuals in our population. The x-axis will represent time. We will begin the graph with one individual at time zero because algae and other microorganisms can asexually reproduce. The rate at which cells reproduce is represented by our slope. Imagine our algae cell. It will split, making two algae cells. Then those two will split, making four, and four will become eight, and eight will become sixteen, and so on. As the population grows in number, the rate at which it grows will also increase. So the slope of our graph will also increase as time goes on. This is an exponential growth curve that all populations exhibit. The only difference between populations is their rate of reproduction. This rate can be affected by things like resource availability, mate selection, predation, gestation, and many other interdependent factors. Regardless of reproduction rate, eventually all populations reach a nearly vertical growth phase. For example, let's look at something with a slower reproduction rate like rabbits. While they reproduce pretty quickly for mammals, they don't compete with the reproduction rate of an algae. So the rate at which they achieve vertical growth is slower than algae, but the pattern is the same. This is what is commonly referred to as a J-shaped curve. Again, this pattern is true for all populations. Even for something like elephants, the rate may be slower, but given enough time, all populations go nearly vertical. Now that our population is healthy and growing rapidly, what happens next? Well, like all good things, this too shall come to an end. Eventually, the reproduction rate of our culture will slow. If you will imagine the life of a cell about this time, there's plenty of light penetration, there are few other cells, and therefore plenty of resources like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So very little time will have to be spent collecting those resources. Likewise, the population has reached a high enough point that mates are readily available. However, given more time and more generations, our algae culture becomes quite dense. There is less light exposure, and it takes a little more time to collect resources. Eventually, as these trends continue, the rate of reproduction will lessen, and the slope of our graph will decrease. Finally, the population will reach its natural limits and begin to equilibrate about a line. This line which the population is limited by is known as carrying capacity. Scientists define carrying capacity as the maximum population that can be sustained indefinitely by a habitat. More generally speaking, carrying capacity is the amount of organisms you can support in an environment without depleting the resources beyond what is survivable for that species. We denote carrying capacity with the letter K. It is worth mentioning that it doesn't always work out so nicely for our algae friends. You might be wondering why some populations crash and other populations reach equilibrium. Well, it all has to do with the rate of reproduction, as well as a phenomenon known as overshoot. If the rate of growth is too great when the population reaches carrying capacity, it can vastly overshoot it. The greater the rate of reproduction, the larger the overshoot will be. The larger the overshoot is, the more likely a population crash is to occur. We see this happening in algal blooms, reindeer in the Privilov Islands, and many different populations if given a small enough habitat. Likewise, there are times when population is still growing rather rapidly, well within its carrying capacity, but then suddenly the carrying capacity is lowered because of things like drought, famine, or seasonal changes. Depending on the growth rate and how large the overshot is, either equilibration or population crash can occur. So let's say you find a population that you're particularly fond of. You notice that due to their high rate of reproduction, that they've crossed carrying capacity, and you decide to do them a favor and get them back under carrying capacity by culling them. Now that you've gone back under carrying capacity, their population will naturally start to expand again, and this will lead to a small overshoot. This will lead to a small crash. Unfortunately, because they have a high reproduction rate, they will experience another overshoot, which will be slightly larger, which will lead to a slightly larger crash. This pattern will repeat until the crash is significant, and then they will resume the sawtooth pattern that we see in algae. If we think of growth rate as a dimmer switch, it can be set from very high like bacteria to really low like pandas, and anywhere in between. In turn, the results of crossing or approaching carrying capacity can vary just as significantly. Luckily for us, in the lab it is easy to maintain our population size and the amount of available resources to avoid a population crash. Better yet, if you measure your culture's growth rate, you can try experimenting with different growth conditions such as changing the heat, light, and nutrients to achieve the highest growth rate possible for your algal species. The question then becomes when, during the growth of your population, do you want to harvest to maximize your yield? While not entirely obvious, the best time to harvest is during the vertical growth phase of your population. Let's take a closer look. If we look at these two sections of the graph, one early on and one as the population approaches carrying capacity, we'll notice that they have similar slopes. 
Let's say we wanted to harvest 10 individuals, and we chose to do that when the population was reaching its maximum. So here's 10 individuals, and here's the time it takes to grow 10 individuals. So it would take us this amount of time to regrow the 10 individuals so that we could take 10 more. This is known as recovery time. If we chose instead to harvest during the vertical growth phase of our graph, we'd find that recovering 10 individuals takes a lot less time. So it is this section of the graph that we describe as our maximum sustainable yield. At this time, with this population, we can harvest the most cells with the quickest recovery time. It is our maximum sustainable yield. The easiest way to calculate your maximum sustainable yield is to graph your population over time. By regularly measuring your population size, you will be able to see the initial increase in reproduction rate and the eventual decrease as your culture approaches its carrying capacity. You can then harvest the difference in total population at these two points in time. You can change the carrying capacity by varying the amount of light, carbon, nitrogen, potassium, phosphate, or heat. Each algal species has an ideal mix of each of these resources, and a lot of these combinations are waiting to be discovered. Now that you know how to find your maximum sustainable yield, you can adjust your carrying capacity to maximize your harvest. So get to it. Good luck and good harvest.